Hello everyone, Marcus here from LastingImpressionArt.com and in this video I'm going to show you the number one best way to retouch skin without losing skin texture information with a process called frequency separation. Frequency separation is the process of splitting the image into the high and low frequencies. The high frequencies contain detail information such as hair texture and skin texture, whereas low frequencies contain large areas of color. To split the image into these two different frequencies, we're going to duplicate our bottom layer twice. So we can right click and go to duplicate layer, or we can go to layer duplicate layer. Now we're going to rename these layers. The lower one will be called low and the top one will be called high. At this point I like to group the two new layers into their own group. That way I can click the visibility of both of them on and off at the same time. Now let's select our low layer and go to filter blur, Gaussian blur. A radius of 10 is recommended as a default setting, but some people like to focus on eyelashes, and once those eyelashes start to blur, you know you're going to get a good separation of color and texture information, but we're going to leave it at 10 for now. And as you can see, when I click the eye off the high layer, our lower layer is blurred. Now, with the high layer selected, go to Image, and apply image. These are the settings for an 8-bit color mode, which is what I'm working in now. If there were if this was a 16-bit color mode image, the blending mode would need to be add and the scale would need to be 2 and we need to check the invert box. Offset should be 0 and we should end up with an image like that. But since this is an 8-bit image, I need to go back to those original settings I had set up. So scale of 2, offset of 128, and inverted unchecked. Always make sure that the layer you're applying is the low layer. So now we have our high frequency information, but this clearly is not what we want to see. So we need to apply the high frequency information to the lower layer, which has our color information. And to do this, we need to change the blending mode of this layer to linear light. And now, the linear light layer is applied over top our lower layer, which has our color information, and where the result is the original image. It's pretty cool, huh? Now, the texture information of the skin is on its own layer and the color information is below it. So in order to clean up skin, all we have to do is adjust our high frequency layer. The best way to do this is usually with the healing brush tool. And since every area of the face has its own skin texture, we always want to sample from those areas as to keep that sort of texture in the area we're fixing unless that texture is just too harsh and we want to bring it down that way we can you know bring it to another similar skin type we wouldn't want to like have a eye skin texture over top of our cheek texture because it's clearly not the same kind of texture but let's go ahead and first start cleaning up all the pieces that we want to bring out that aren't necessarily skin. So little pieces of dirt and dust and makeup, whatever might be showing that you don't want in your final image. We'll just take those right out. Any distracting highlights like that might be good to remove as well. You can even use this to remove stray pieces of hair like this one. We'll just sample next to it and then use our healing brush to take it out and it's completely gone without any kind of change in the color underneath. Um, 
You may want to use a tablet if you don't have one for this process because all these little dots can take quite a while to clean up and it, it really speeds things up if you're flown along with just your pen rather than trying to click it away with the mouse. Now for an area like this that has a lot of really deep texture, we may want to soften that up. And we can do that by using the patch tool, selecting the area we want to repair, and then moving it to an area that's somewhat similar in texture. And you can see that has repaired that texture without actually changing the color information below. Now, if we did want to change the color information for like this red area, we'll say, we'll go to our low layer and use our clone stamp and then sample from an area you wish to replace the color with. And I like to turn the flow way down just so that it's not super dramatic. And let's just slowly bring some of that redness out. Over here, we'll sample from this side just to tone it down. Now, one challenging thing is when there's areas such as freckles that kind of end up a little bit high frequency, a little bit low frequency. I wouldn't normally remove anything that's part of the model, such as freckles, because that kind of makes them who they are. But if there is a situation where you see the two different layers um, kind of overlapping each other, a good way to really make sure that you're blending and blurring out the skin really well is by duplicating the low layer one more time and then we will go to filter blur again Gaussian blur but then this time we're really gonna crank it up to make sure that skin is completely blurred out this makes sure that all that color information within the freckles is now one solid color but as you can see this does not look good so we only want to show certain areas of what this layer is doing. So we're going to alt click on the layer mask. Now alt click fills, creates a layer mask, but it fills it with black. So now we're not seeing anything. So we're gonna go over to our brush tool and then make sure we're using white because white means show and black means hide. And then we're going to paint in the areas of the skin we want to soften up and kind of hide those freckles away. You can definitely see it more down in this area of the face. This also works well for large areas such as chests and arms and to get rid of the little variations within the skin texture, any blotchiness. But like I said, we now have this layer completely showing, so all those freckles should be gone in the color information. So in the high layer, we're going to clone stamp and get rid of areas we think are a little too intense. And you can see that's taken out a lot of the freckle information. You can see it really well here and here. So let's look at our original image compared to what we've done so far. You can see a lot of that freckle has been removed now. But I kept it in a little bit just because, like I said, that is who she is. She does have freckles, so I don't want to make her a different person. Another great option to use, since you already have your layers split, 
is to use this high frequency layer as a sharpening layer. Since we have our detail information, if we duplicate it, it's going to be that much more detailed. So it's really going to look extreme when we first do this. So let's look at what that looks like by duplicating the layer. We're going to call it sharpen. Look at that. Pretty intense. Probably a little too much. What I like to do with it is alt click on layer mask again to get a black layer. And it always looks better to me if you go in and you sharpen the eyes, eyebrows, some hair, and the lips to really make them stand out. And it's pretty crazy because you, you'll think that your image is pretty crystal clear until you go in and do this and then you'll question about your lenses and s wondering if they're truly in focus and all that because the comparison between the two it's just it's mind-boggling <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and do that for both layers and I'll show you what happens when we put it on some hair oh let's get those lips real quick make those pop so let's start with our hair but the problem with hair sometimes is that it quickly goes way too sharp and starts to look pretty grainy. So the nice thing about using a layer mask like this is that we can actually go in with black over top of any white that we've done and turn the flow down on our brush and start painting it back. So it's now a gray instead of a pure white for the blending mode. And that just knocks that sharpen down, gets it closer to the original. And let's switch back to, to white here and sharpen up some of the other hair around here. Just to make it pop a bit. And that, folks, is frequency separation. I found it to be the absolute fastest way to retouch skin without losing all the texture information and making it look plastic. Hope you found that helpful. Please be sure to comment, like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our weekly videos. Also, if you'd like to help us out, please click through on the links below in the video description or on the Amazon banner on lastingimpressionart.com whenever you buy anything on Amazon. We get a small commission at no extra cost to you. And don't forget, you can also follow us on Twitter at LastingImpArt. Thanks again for watching.